Welcome to the stream today. How's it going, everyone? Uh, we are working on Roger Williams again today. How's everyone doing? We got Beal Brothers in chat, Totter, of course, Mark, I love your zoos, uh, Metrones Gaming, we got um, Philly Sports as always, Seth as always, uh, Genevieve, I want to you know, thank very much for becoming our very first Lion Rider King, so I will be creating whatever the hell Genevieve would like me to make. Within reason, as long as it's not, you know, going to get me demonetized or banned or anything of that nature. Um, I will make whatever mod you would like. So, uh, how's everyone doing? Everyone everyone doing good today? See, we're all, uh, you know, also making fun of Best in Slot. Uh, obviously, it's a little bit of an early stream, so I'm sure a lot of my viewers are going to be from Europe, of course, because... For you guys, it's a reasonable time slot, but for me, it's obviously a bit early for the Americans. Uh, where do I send in your custom mod? Uh, honestly, if you want, you can just post it in the chat. Like, you just, you know, let me know what you want me to make, and I can start working on it for you. Which, uh, speaking of which, so obviously, uh, last stream, we worked on the uh, barnyard for Roger Williams, and uh, someone wanted me to spawn in the, the animals, and doing that lagged out my computer to no end, to where it literally broke everything, uh, until the stream crashed, so hopefully, fingers crossed, that doesn't happen today, but um, I, I sort of started repairing a little bit of the work from last stream. We didn't lose too much, it was literally just like this little half here, and then like this little building, but I can remake that really quickly. But as always, uh, I like to start out my streams now going over any updates for mods, since I know that's a, another big thing that people like to see from my streams. So if we pan over here, I made this little cage. And as you can see, we have all the new mods that I've made. So um, we've made a few since last week. Uh, give me a sec. It's going to freeze for a sec before we get it. Hi, Nick. Do you remember me, Giuseppe? I do remember you. You were here last week, I believe. Uh, so, welcome back. But, let's see. So, give me a sec. I might have to reduce the um, graphic settings again, just for today's stream. Because, But, yes, uh, if you see, uh, you can pretty much see the three big animals that I have. So, um, we have, uh, on the left, the raccoon mod, which I made for Drew and Estan. So, that's going to be used in their... Beyond Wolf Nature Preserve. Yeah, give me a sec. It's very laggy, so I might want to reduce this down a bit. Pause. <laughs> you know it's bad when like even pausing the game causes it to lag. So give me a sec. We're going to go into settings. Uh, the main wolf. Yes, I... Uh, even though my official poll, which uh, all of my members can, ch you know, voted on, like Totter and Mark and uh, Leaf, etc., you all voted, and um, even though the actual post I put up said the Maned Wolf, it I did in fact make a Maned Wolf, of course, because I figured that's what everyone was intending, and not me making a werewolf, but. So yeah, honestly, if I turn post processing down and atmospherics down and be in a, I had all my settings like on max for um, a couple of things so grass honestly I don't even care about grass density that can literally be low um, and that should be fine so just reducing those down should give me a little bit more frame rates <laughs> frame rate hello Vicky welcome to the stream Maria I hope your raccoon problem is fixed um, and then, obviously, uh, we'll be checking out those raccoons today. So hopefully this gives me a little bit better. Yeah, this is a little bit better. So let's just kind of look at them. So first things first, we can look at the Black Rhino mod. So this is kind of an update to a older mod I made a while back. Um, so that mod, the Black Rhino mod, and... For those who are wondering, I can pull up my Nexus here. So this is my Nexus with all of my mods that I've uploaded. And as you can see, I've updated nearly every mod, which is something that, you know, is 
it, like, I, I've never done it before for any other previous update, but due to the surge in popularity of mods through, you know, uh, like Drew and Estan promoting them and uh, the breakthroughs in modding, I thought, okay, I might as well. So the only mods left I need to update, hypothetically, are the uh, Gray Indian Elephant mod, which that should be an easy fix. I can do that literally whenever. Llamas with Hats, which I'm not sure anyone even cares about because that was just a joke of a mod. I'm, I technically did update my Lion Remaster, but I don't think it's necessary because there's an awful lot of um, lions and stuff So I'm or, uh, out there. And so the other two that I needed to update are just the Watusi and the Black Rhino. But if we look at the original Black Rhino, I was like, ew, this just looks like an ironed out Indian Rhino. So instead, for me, what I'm doing is instead of taking this original kind of gross Indian Rhino that I originally had, I decided I would just redo it. And so this is the brand new Black Rhino mod. Um, I've modified quite a bit, so the face has its own custom normal maps and textures. And um, yeah, I think it, it looks significantly better. It's a little laggy still. The frame rates are still very low. But I am going to, uh, you know, work on this. And so I am going to um, update this. And fingers crossed, this will be my very first full custom animal for Planet Zoo. So no replacements. This would not replace the Indian Rhino in the final product. This would be a brand new animal. I am going to need help from Jesse and the other uh, modders like Hendrix and stuff to pull it off, but fingers crossed, this will be the very first official... Uh, this would be the, the Pachyrhinosaurus of Planet Zoo, which makes sense, actually. It's a rhino rhinoceros, so... Um, so, provided... I can spawn in the mail. The mail is a work in progress. Um... I have to redo the model, because apparently, I thought this was a little odd, I'm not going to lie, but I thought that they'd have a, um, what's it called? I thought the, the Indian rhinos would use the same model and rig. Apparently not. Apparently the male and the female have very similar rigs, but they're technically different. So this is the male. I like the body shape of the male a lot better, but the texture is definitely a work in progress. So um, the male looks better body-wise and movement-wise than the female, and obviously has a better size sizing than the female. But, you know, it is still work in progress. And then finally, I will, of course, add the baby, and then a Zoopedia, and custom icons, and behavior, and African names, and yada, yada, yada. So that is the Black Rhino mod, and that is coming soon. Oh, uh, I should also mention, since we're in Roger Williams, and speaking of Black Rhinos, I went to the zoo uh, last week, I believe, last, last Sunday or so, and uh, they've actually installed in this area right here a uh, Black Rhino statue next to the elephants. Or actually, sorry, it's uh, right here. So there's a black rhino statue right here now, and um, yeah, so it's kind of weird because we don't have black rhinos in the zoo, but like I said, we also had that pangolin statue over by the moon bears and stuff. But I've also said for the longest time that when we get rid of our elephants, black rhinos are likely to be the uh, case. So, uh, oh, Genevieve, so could you make a wolf's Gwynin mod? That's a monkey, right? Give me a sec. I'm just going to look it up. But, yes, I can make literally whatever. So, yes, it is a monkey. Okay, yeah, and that, that actually works out. Okay. So, yeah, I can make those. I, I, um, they're at uh, Bronx Zoo over in the Congo thing. So, yeah, I can make that monkey for you. That's no issue at all. So, uh, yeah, that'll be your uh, little perk for being a supporter of the channel. And you will get a Wolf Swenin mod. So, congratulations. <laughs> Uh, Nick, how do you put the white rhino mod for the baby Indian rhino? Oh, I haven't updated the baby Indian rhino to upload it onto Nexus yet. So, um, I do apologize about that. Um, but I will be working on that if possible. So, what do we got? What do we got? 
what time is it where you are? Right now it is 1 o'clock, 1.10. So it's a bit early in the day, but, you know, that's Americans. I, I know there's some people that are in school and stuff like that. Uh, Red Crown Crane is so tall. It's because it's using the um, ostrich mod, which it seems like it's super tall, but they're very, very tall cranes to begin with. Uh, in real life. Like, they are about the size of a person. Um, obviously, the ostrich is a little bit big, but, you know. Uh, but it's funny. Because I've updated all the mods in, like, for the game, or nearly all the mods, uh, my my zoo is just full of mods. So we have uh, ma a manatee exhibit over here. We have a white-maned wolf over in the uh, red wolf habitat. Yeah, this is kind of a freaky thing. And I guess I could show off the actual maned wolf in a second. But this is kind of cool. It's like an albino maned wolf in my uh, red wolf exhibit. So if we come over here, we can see the actual normal color. So this is the maned wolf mod. Uh, and this was created uh, initially for Wildcard, my um, upcoming series. I'm, I'm still working on it because I, I need to get the uh, um, intro music and stuff all set. But we are going to be working on that very, very soon. And so that should be good. But here's the main wolf. Uh, it looks pretty good right now. But there is a glitch right now with the tail. And this goes for all mods in the game currently. Uh, Jesse and Hendrix are working on this because we have no idea what's causing it. But all models created after 1.4 for some reason have this weird polygonal issue with some of the fur shaders. So in this case... Uh, you know, it has like these very sharp triangles and stuff on the tail, but otherwise, you know, it looks like a maned wolf. It's, you know, got the big, um, big mane and it's very, very tall. Yep. You know, moves around like a maned wolf would. Um, again, it's so laggy. So I do apologize. It's why I usually like to show off my mods in a less laggy zoo, just because, um, Roger Williams is so big, but if we go over here, this is the raccoon mod. So the raccoon obviously uses the red panda rig, of course. And uh, this is a little raccoon. And this is just exclusively for the Beyond Drew Nature Preserve. Otherwise, I don't think I really would have made it. One of my co-hosts that was actually on, um, not a Roger Williams ep episode, it had to be some other series, um... Maybe like the Australia reviews or something when that DLC happened. Uh, we uh, Rabid was working on her own um, raccoon mod. So as you can see here, it's a raccoon. And it, I modified the face so that it you know looks more like a raccoon. And I was very tempted for Roger Williams to put these over by the eagle exhibit because as we know, they were eaten by raccoons um, occasionally. Uh, so what else can I show off? And that for the longest time. I also have some other mods that Drew and Estan wanted me to install. And so some buildings are going to look funky. So this was a, like a red brick uh, to brown brick or tan brick mod that was on the uh, workshop but needed to be updated for them. So I just quickly updated that. Uh, the Tokken are updated. Again, the Red Crown Crane are updated. So a lot of stuff is just updated. <laughs> That's just the, the short of it. So here's the Red Crown Crane. This is also updated. Um, that's, you know, looking like how it did in the episode. Nick, did you ever see my dusty PC? I did not. Um, also, I'm going to try to not swear this stream. Last stream, I, I, I swore like a couple of times, and then because of it, I was demonetized. So <laughs> I'm going to try not to do that this time. Uh, apparently YouTube is like an algorithm that like seeks that stuff out now. Uh, so here's the Tokens. Um, you know, they are also available. I've updated them so now their tails are, uh, there used to be a glitch where their tail would like kind of shoot up and be really long and stuff. But now it's, uh, now it's just a little puff ball. So that's kind of nice. Um, so, you know, that's the Tokens and they look pretty good. You know, I like, I like the new fur shaders on all of my animals that I've updated. Uh, we can go over, obviously Nick's Eagle mod has been updated for a few weeks now, but obviously that's all set for the zoo. 
Uh, my elephants are technically African forest elephants right now because I was working on that mod last. Um, so don't mind that. They're technically African forest elephants right now. Uh, my Maasai giraffe mod also updated. The red river hogs also are updated. They got a little patch, uh, so now they're uh, fluffy. So now they don't... Um, they used to, like, you know, not have any fur shaders at all, but now they have um, better, better fur. Um, I was still trying to get the ear fur to work really well, but it's still... it For some reason, it doesn't appear when you zoom in from close up. It will from far away. Um, give me a sec. I hate this glitch where, like, animals will, like, spawn in, show up visible for a second, and then turn invisible again. But, um... At, for like from this distance, you can see how fluffy their ears are, right? And then if I zoom in, they just go away. <laughs> so like the fluff on the ears starts out really fluffy, and then it just dials back a second. Um, let's see. I come by only for the swearing. Yeah. Yeah, I was talking about Drew, because Drew had the same thing, where, like, you know, uh, normally on our streams and stuff, like, you know, it, you just you swear just because, you know, you're, you're, it's easy to not swear for, like, a an edited 20-minute video or something, but, like, when it's, like, a two, three-hour stream, it's a lot harder. But as you can see, yep, they have a little bit of fluff on their backs now, their ears, like, I, and their cheeks are also fluffy. Uh, their eyes are still, like, hell spawn, but, uh. You know, I think it, it, it'll look pretty good, you know, compared to the old one. And then, obviously, I can show off the out ads, which the out ads are available now. Uh, they still behave like, look at that. That's really good looking, right? And so their fur is actually um, fur now. So it doesn't actually use that technique I used in the original out ad episode where I take their eyelashes and just copy them a bunch. Their, their um, beards are actually made out of fur, so they will, um, let me get it out of the, get it out of this area, because I want to show it off, like, moving around. Do you have plans for a prehistoric animal mod? Uh, technically, but no, um, because I did start the Triceratops mod. And I remember way back in the day, very, very early into modding for Planet Zoo, me and some of the other modders had a big um, planned pack, which was going to be like a Pleistocene Park pack. Uh, so NDP got the Woolly Mammoth working. Obviously, the Smilodon mod is on Nexus. Uh, it has been updated in a bit, but that was part of that. I was going to work on like the American Lion and a couple other animals. I forgot what I what I signed up for, but I had a few animals that I was working on. But uh, here's the ad ad. So as you can see, the beard is is all fur. I had someone being like, Nick, you're, the fur is messed up on the ad ad. I'm like, no, it's not. This is actually how it's supposed to look. <laughs> it's supposed to be like this kind of like super, super long beard and stuff. Um, so like I said, that's that's pretty much it for all the updated animals. Um, I still, I lost the file for the African Crown Crane, which is a bit upsetting because that one was definitely the biggest pain to update to begin with, or like to mod to begin with. So that's not going to be fun having to redo that, but I will eventually. Um, I've just been, like I said, busy with other stuff recently, other projects, but, uh, and uh, everyone can, uh, you know, spam in the chat because Julie, my girlfriend, of course, uh, still has not recorded the Babarusa episode. So we have to do that. And so she, now she's backpedaling and saying, oh, no one wants me to hear it. So I, I, I am very adamant that everyone does want to hear her rant. Yeah, but now you're putting pressure on me to actually yeah, deliver well. You need to deliver this rant. You've been hyping it up for so many weeks. You have to deliver now. But speaking of, I have updated the Babarusa mod. So the Babarusa mod actually got some uh, slight... Uh, changes from the last time you guys saw it, probably. So, uh, the Babarusa now is a bit more, uh, hunched over with a longer face, and, uh, yeah. So, I think it actually looks a lot more like a Babarusa now than it did before. It's still not great, um, of course, because it's a very difficult mod to, 
you know, produce. But I think it's definitely pretty good relative to what it is. There's a, a little bit of an issue with the normal map, which I, I know how to fix now, but at the time, you know, it just was a mess. So what we're going to do is try to fix it up. Leaf, what's up, everyone? I see you've got into modding. I've seen your uh, Flamingo mod as well as your Macaque mod. Which, by the way, if you want help, because I did see your fur shader was a bit messed up, uh, you did the technique that I used to do, uh, where you delete the fur shell. Um, there's a patch, though, that makes it so that if you just click a single button, it'll make a really good fur shader. Um, so I would definitely recommend that if you want. Uh, you can get a, a really nice looking uh, main for that macaque. So that should be good. But yeah, so now I have shown off pretty much all of the mods. I can go back on pause mode. Um, so like I said, you know, Black Rhino, Main Wolf, Raccoon, Barbarossa, Manatee, you've, you've seen them all now. Um, and then we can just kind of start working on the farm again. So just to try to reduce lag, and obviously I'm not going to keep these guys anyway since they don't belong. Um, we're going to quickly just box these guys up and then delete this habitat. Um, do I need to spawn in a... What do I do? A, excuse me, a keeper to get rid of the poop? Because I don't really want poop on this. This area is going to be a, a staff parking lot. And I doubt I really want some poop in there. So I am just going to quickly go around. And then, you know, try to move it out of the way. Uh, get rid of the poop and then destroy this habitat. Just to reduce lag. Let's just go over here. Hopefully he'll just clean up the poop on his own and... I can just hang out over here, looking at the beautiful landscape while that happens. But like I said, I think I actually still will reduce some of my graphics, just because I, I, I like smooth transitions with building and stuff, and I just... the It's funny because Roger Williams, if you're just running it alone on a computer, is pretty okay. The issue with why it's so laggy is just the fact that I'm streaming. Like, it, it, I have a very good computer otherwise, it's just, um, like, let's, like, if we do this, reduce some of those down, weather effects, because hopefully it should just be sunny, so that's not an issue. But yes, let's just try that out for now, it's still laggy. There's really no winning, though, because that's the issue, is just live streaming plus a bunch of other stuff, you know, you just end up with these issues. So, let's see. That's why I like, I, I was kind of hoping that, you know, when I did live streaming, I would just have, like, kind of one-off series and stuff I could focus on. But, let's see. Um, what other settings can I... Oh, screen reflections. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Why was that on high? Well, the whole thing is dark now. <laughs> it's it's funny how, like, just some of these post-processing effects will immediately, like, make your, like, thing super, like, dark or something. Because I was telling Drew, because, like, he was like, oh, I can handle any any map. I'm like, you sure? Like, like I could send you Roger Williams for the community showcase, but it's a lot. And he's like, oh, I can handle it. Thornton Hill. And I'm like, yeah, but Roger Williams is, like, three times as detailed as Thornton Hill. And, like, like it's the same thing. Like, the only other comparable uh, YouTubers out there that I can definitely agree to have, like, this level of insaneness just Goron and Haribo. That's it. The, like, any other YouTuber or whatever, they have big zoos. Like, don't get me wrong, but, like, um, the piece count and stuff of, like, individual areas or, you know. Like, again, for people like me and Justin Goron will do a 1,500 to 2,000 piece 
sign. <laughs> like, um, and so, while I, I always say I, I believe that Roger Williams is still more optimized than it could be, it's still very obviously, like, you know, taxing. Uh, close other apps, it should go smoother. Yeah, see, that's the issue, though, is I can't close any other apps because I technically don't have any others open. I have Google open for you guys to look at the chat, and then I just have OBS, which I need to record. So it's just, like, you know, I don't have, like, a bunch of things uh, running in the background and stuff. Um, but that When I'm modding, that's usually when the issues come into play. But um, right now, yeah, it's so laggy. <laughs> oh, that's the reason. I was on unpause. Okay. The other thing I worry about is just this area in particular, World of Adaptations, is very intense. So, Nick, if you don't update the Eagle mod for the next update, I won't be able to play the game. I lost my Panda files. It is updated. What are you talking about, though? The Panda update is updated. Or, uh, yeah, the Eagle update is... The Eagle mod is updated. So, yeah, you could download that. That's not an issue. And then if you're saying you lost the Panda files for the next update, the next update, you won't even need it because by that point, the Panda mod... Um, or the game will update your files regardless. So... But let us actually probably start working on the, what's it called? The goat habitat. I will start work on that since we basically have to redo what we did last time. So let me, let me get a good setup here. All right. So let me just, to mark my recording, we can start recording. And then we can get started. There we go. All right. So first thing I can do is get rid of this little thingy here. So um, this whole area, technically, like this this wall, uh, I can get rid of because this is needs to be replaced with picket fences or the uh, yeah the kind of like wooden railing that I made last time. So we can start work on that. And then this. So yeah, this literally just stretches pretty much all the way to here, I believe. Give or take. Yep, that lines up about right. Maybe, maybe over here a little bit. I, on my other uh, monitor, if you, anyone was wondering, I have the um, actual thing pulled up. My uh, Google Earth or Google Street View look at the park. So, if anyone was wondering, because I know people are probably like, "What are you? What are you even talking about? What are you looking at?" But we are going to move this into place, and then we can start work on the picket fence. So if we just do this, that should be good there. And then I can literally just do this. Can't wait to see the donkeys and goats. Yeah, so unfortunately I haven't done those just yet. I'll have those obviously done for when we do the final episode. And then I'm going to probably release all the animals, the guinea hog, the goat, the sheep, the donkey, alpaca, etc., just in like some kind of like farmyard petting zoo pack. And then hopefully that should, you know, all work out. Because I've been liking doing packs lately a lot more, but. Oh, you're gonna. <laughs> Julie just looked at me, held up a box of hair dye, and then just like walked away. So my guess is she's gonna go dye her hair right now. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna be working on a petting zoo pack and then because i've been doing like in these packs because i was debating even doing since drew and Estan keep having me do all these like kind of like north american animals like the beaver and the um the beaver and the raccoon and 
Uh, I'm working on a heron for them now, like a like a blue heron. I'm probably gonna be, you know, doing all of those. Is the fence floating? No, it's not. It sunk a little bit into the into the ground. It look it sort of. I'll give you that. It does sort of look like it's floating, but it's not. So let's just rotate the fence a little bit because I want it to be kind of snug against the the path here. Let's move this into place. I now need a new TV. See, like, it's funny because, I like, when I was a kid, like, whenever there would be, like, a big TV, I'd be like, oh, my God, I want it so badly or whatever, like, on, like, a sale or something. Now, as, like, an adult, I'm, like, realizing that, like, TVs are kind of, like, useless other than, like, I'll use a TV as a monitor for my computer, but, like, actually buying a TV since no one really watches cable anymore is kind of like, oh, well, that was a thing of the past, like... It's just not as big of a deal anymore. Especially because I used to work at Target or whatever, and we'd have, like, uh, TVs on sale all the time. And I was just like, wow, these are uh, not as good of, you know, a... You can get, like, a 70-inch TV now for, like, nothing. Like, less than, like, 400 bucks. Which is crazy to me, because, like, that used to be, like, you know, like, oh my god, you have a 70-inch TV. That's massive. Alright, let's let's do this. So the wood technically bends a little bit, but shh, don't tell anyone. That's not how wood planks work, Nick. What are you doing? Don't tell. Alright, so we've done that and now I did want to do something with this back wall, but I'm not sure what exactly. Because in the zoo, it's kind of like a... Um, well, first off, I can do this little building quick using corrugated metal. There's like a little like feeding station where you can get corn. Wait, what is it trying to snap to? It was trying to snap to something for some reason. So yeah, over here there's like a little feeding station for like a corn dispenser. Okay, apparently it doesn't want to let me... What the heck? Why is it not letting me do it? It's trying to snap it to something, I just don't know what. Can I go on this side? Yeah, okay. Sometimes it'll, like, misbehave like that, and then, like, a, a tip I always do is, like, always just go one over, and then it'll be fine for some reason. I don't know why it does that, though. So, I will decorate this afterward, but just for now, we can just do this. And then, now I need to do... So, that I need a wooden wall, but... I guess I'll use the stained wood, just because that's what I've been using, but, like, if I do this. I suppose this will work. Yeah, because then that'll at least show, like, some consistency with the coloring and stuff. All of this, so that's just... I'm trying to get rid of all of my, you know, greenery and stuff. I, I like, set a bunch of stupid green, um, like, kind of, like, markers in place. Alright, so... I can, that's good, but I just want to line it up the best I can with the path. There we go. Maybe a little bit over. Sweet. So that looks good. 
and then it comes around over here. And then just connects to the barn. So I can just do this. And then I can do this. Just because it's going to go in a little bit. That's good. What I like is like it, this type of fence for some reason doesn't Z fight as much as other things have in the past. All right, let's add. They have a little climbing frame, so we're gonna make a quick little goat climbing frame here. Um, maybe not that big. Let's see. What's that uh, piece that a lot of people use? I was using it yesterday for. Uh, I was making a dump for Estan, uh, for Masked Bandit. This piece, the wooden pallet. I kind of want to make it out of this. I doubt they'll even be able to use it, but will it be a goat climbing frame? I mean, will the goats climb it? That's... Probably not, is my guess, but that is the idea, is it would be a, what is, what the, I'm, I'm almost sore, I'm not going to do it, YouTube's listening, uh, what do they call it, there's a, uh, they just call it wood beam thin, okay, sure. Because honestly, I might just make the whole platform custom. Just that it looks good. So if I do this. And then we can do this. And we're just going to angle it downward. And then that should be good. So then I can just literally just go down all the way like so. And then the goats will have a little climbing frame to go up. Nice. There we go. Nice little platform for the goats. And honestly, I mean, yeah, that's fine. Technically, it, it, it seems like, oh, you didn't connect it all the way to the ground. Um, since I don't think the goats are even going to climb this thing to begin with, I'm going to make it more accurate, which means uh, not even having it touch the ground. And then here, this is where I was saying I might as well just make the whole thing custom. I will just make the actual climbing frame also out of this wood. Oh, that's actually cool. So on one end of the climbing frame, it's... That's interesting, actually. On one end of the climbing frame, it's a staircase. On the other end, it's a ramp. So these goats have like a little handicap accessible climbing frame, I guess. I don't know why they would do that. Why, like, one side would have uh, a ramp and then the other would just have a staircase. That's kind of interesting. So this is going to be the staircase side. And it looks like they only have maybe two steps. They're kind of bigger, like, steeper steps. So I'll try to do something like that. Now we can move this over into place. I give him one more step. Cool. So that's good looking. When everyone saw the stream, they're like, oh boy, pigs. 
And then, like, I don't think anyone was expecting, you know, most of the stream to just be me making a climbing frame for a goat. But that is what the barnyard entails, everyone. Which I'm kind of curious. So, just a quick, like, little, like, poll, I guess, for anyone who's listening. Who actually, like, do you guys prefer that I, like, do part of, like, Roger Williams Live? Or would you guys like it, like, where it's just uh, the way it used to be, where it was just strictly um, the time lapse footage and then I do other stuff on streams and stuff? Because I don't mind doing it like this. It actually gives me some incentive to work on Roger Williams. Um, when I'm working on these things live, but, you know, I, I want your guys' opinion on that, because I've been doing a couple of these Roger Williams lives, and, um, I know a lot of people just sort of like to, like, just hang out and chill and stuff, and, you know, talk to me and do that sort of stuff, so I'm just curious if anyone, you know, has any input on that aspect of this series. So let's do this. So that is that climbing frame. So that's cool. And then there's two little logs, or uh, I guess three, three logs on the side. So let's use, yeah, we could use the Australian logs. That works. Or do I want these logs? Are these fatter? Yeah, they are. use those logs and then there's like a little is that a tight rope between them it's kind of interesting actually give me a sec would you be tempted to create the meerkats the v meerkats and emperor penguins um i may i was going to perhaps do Emperor Penguins, but no one, literally no one voted on it uh, for my members. I, uh, but that was an option for a mod that they could have chosen. They just, no one did. Um, so give me a sec. So yeah, uh, Emperor Penguins were an option. And I've, I've been debating doing Meerkats for a bit now. Um, I just, I don't know, I, I haven't had the, the motivation or like the, the, I don't know what you would call it, the like a real like calling to, to go ahead and start work on meerkats. Cause I know how I would do them. I would definitely use the pangolin as a base for it, but I'll have to see cause you know, Part of me is debating it, the other part of me is like, eh, is that even worth the hassle, or we might get them anyway, or, I, I don't know. For me, it's like, I don't know how high demand is when stuff like ZZ's, um, meerkats and stuff do really well on their own, but I'll have to see. So, you know, take that as you will. I will have to, I will see about that. As for Emperor Penguins, like I said, I, I have a lot of interest in doing Emperor Penguins, so they're definitely more likely just because that would be a quick mod to make. I could whip that up in, like, no time. But, again, I'll have to see about that. So, no promises, but, you know, definitely Emperor Penguin would be a lot more likely uh, of those two that you listed. I'm liking it because you're giving me build ideas, time lapses are nice for big ideas, but this helps me learn how to build live. Yeah, um, I like because, yeah, I kind of like that, like how I can give advice live for, um, you know, different builds and stuff. Because I, I found that too. It's sometimes a lot easier, like, when you can quickly follow along in real time and see, like, oh, that person's doing this or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, so as an example, like something like this, that could work. 
but they have more of like a darker wood on the inside. So let's see, if I do this, yeah, no, that's not gonna work either. We need a horizontal. See, the stained wood is great, but is it now too much to ask for, uh, I want stained wood, but just a horizontal patterning now. Um, because <laughs> I love the stained wood, but uh, that's a, n a new thing now where I'm like, okay, yep, uh, really great job, Frontier, but could I have it so that it's uh, horizontal wood instead of vertical? Which is like the dumbest thing ever that, like, you know, like that's now what I'm like re requesting slash complaining about, but. That would just be a, a nice little thing. Uh, okay, let's... Right now I'm working on that kind of uh, dispenser for the food of the petting zoo. I'm probably going to be doing a lot of like little details today. I'm still not sure if I'm actually going to finish the episode today. Though I was hoping to, but it's looking less and less likely the more I'm looking at, like, oh, I could do that little detail. Because, like, as an example, I'm probably going to do these feeders, and then I'm also probably going to do, like, the hand washing station and some of that stuff. Stuff that, you know, probably wouldn't, you know, normally matter, but... I'm going to do it, because I'm going for 100% accuracy. There we go. So we'll do that, and then there's a little countertop about halfway through. So what could I use? Let's see. Hmm. This is tough. So I need like a little like metal or not metal, like tech, it's kind of wood. Um, like, I guess rest or something. Hand or uh, food station. So I'll place that down. I guess I'll use that thing. Everyone wants me to use Frank. I'll use Bayou Frank that I made for <laughs> Drew and S. Dan. Oh boy. Alright, so the counter was too tall. Building's fine. Counter is about two pegs too tall so we'll put it roughly there and now we can work on why is there a door uh, it's not a door that's a uh, that makes more sense there's like a little wooden um, centerpiece type thing like right here <laughs> I'm like why is there a door So we'll do this. Excellent. Buy you Frank is best Frank. There you are, Drew. Um, cause yeah, I was literally like, cause I usually don't use like Frank. Cause if if I want like sizing, I'll literally just place down an actual person or something. Cause I, I use a lot of paths and stuff. But um, I don't know. I'm gonna try to start getting into using Franks and stuff. But that'll be tough for me. I'm very bad at doing that. Where? What would be a good? Ooh, this could work. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe something like this. Oh, what did I just click? 
Is this redialable? Redialable, yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. That actually works pretty well. Yeah, and actually that gives me a little nice little detail or something. Gives it a, a nice little trim along the side. So let's do this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then this could just be a thing on the side. You must evolve past using game paths, be one with implied everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, for me, I'm just like, nope, I need to just mod it in. Nothing is implied. Everything is functional. I'm going to make the uh, the corn dispenser mod in a, in, in a minute for my petting zoo. This is going to be the most immersive petting zoo ever. <laughs> you play a whole mini game to feed your goats. Which, I, I, I want to go on a slight little tangent or whatever about um, mods lately. Because I've been seeing this a lot with a, a lot of videos or whatever about the... Um, JWE mods recently. People are being like really, really like picky with like what they're getting with JWE right now. And I don't understand it uh, because so obviously Jesse has been, you know, doing things like custom animals, right? He made the first custom dinosaur for uh, JWE. And then on top of that, he also worked with uh, Iaki and Hendrix on getting uh custom maps for JWE where you can just place um, buildings inside of water. You can terraform the land to whatever you want. You can, uh, the maps are bigger, just a ton of like stuff to do with JWE. Now he released those mods, give or take, let's say three days ago within the first 24 hours, there was obviously a bunch of big JWE, uh, like creators and stuff that then start like attacking the mod mods like oh my god this is so bad it breaks your game if you save it or whatever this is horrible the the dinosaur is missing sound effects and stuff and they were being so harsh on these mods and i'm like can you give it like less than 48 hours before you just tear this apart with like bugs cuz like i just don't understand why like um Frontier could have something that breaks, like the water system with the aquatic update. Still hasn't been fixed with, like, how many crashes and stuff the new water system has caused uh, to this day. We should be getting a patch soon, but it's been about a month. Um, and no one complained about that. But when it comes to mods, if a mod doesn't come out perfectly for, like, to unreasonable expectations on the first try, people are being so negative. Because I don't want to, like, call out, like, specific people or anything, but I had, like, there's one really big JWE, JWE uh, creator. Um, it's not Best in Slot, if you're uh, wondering about that. Best in Slot, I think, gave it a fair shot with, you know, it being like, hey, by the way, you know, there's some issues with this, but it's still amazing. But there's one other JWE creator that was, like, just like roasting it and like being like this is the worst thing ever how dare they this is gonna break your game and this is unacceptable like this this is a fundamentally broken mo it's like what are you talking about like it's been two days and then everyone was just agreeing with them in the comment section and then i was like i just commented i'm like can you give it like more than a day and sure enough, yesterday a patch went out to fix the uh, bug for the map creator that was making it so that you couldn't save the map file. And uh, uh, what is it? Jesse also like put out a patch um, either yesterday or today that allows it so that the dinosaur or the Pachyrhinosaurus actually has uh, sound effects now. So like that bug is also fixed. So now the only thing, like, you know, that you have to complain about is the variance of this custom dinosaur that Jesse made uh, is still not working. But once again, this mod came out less than a week ago, but it still has 
custom everything else. Like, everything else is a completely... There's literally a new campaign mission to go do a dig site for this new dinosaur. He didn't have to make that, but he did. And yet people are still like, oh my god, this is horrible, what the heck. And I'm like, I, I don't understand. So I'm like worried about that with Planet Zoo and stuff as well. Where if we do get our first custom animal, like let's say my black rhino does become like the first custom animal. Are people going to complain if it's like, oh, well, specifically, you know, the black rhino is still using the Indian rhino like walk cycle. So what the heck? Why didn't you make a new walk cycle? And it's like, really? Like, give it a break a little bit. Nick, I recommend you make the animals. They're more important and you should release them at the end. What does that mean? What do you mean I should make the animals? Because if you're talking about making the animals for the farm, I, I am. I've already sort of started that. But um, I don't know if you're talking about something else. But um, people are awful. This is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, I feel bad because the other thing is like when it comes to mods, mods are not or modders, I should say, are not developers. And even though a lot of us are classically trained in development, like me and Eben and Jesse and stuff have worked in the game industry and we know how to make high quality stuff. Modders don't get paid though, usually. Like, it, like if I were to like actually like, you know, get paid what a frontier salary is um, to make mods, I like, you know, we'd be in a whole different camp right now um because obviously like i get in, in today's case i got one lion rider king member which means i got twenty dollars but since youtube takes a cut of it i'm really only making maybe fifteen dollars and i don't get that for a month so fifteen dollars and i'll probably be working on that monkey for a few hours so <laughs> on average i'm making seven dollars an hour <laughs> <laughs> and that's a very inconsistent, um, you know, pay since that's, you know, one, one time, like, and that's just the issue is essentially what like modders are doing is like sort of like freelancing where you're not really getting paid a ton of money and stuff, um, to do stuff. And most modders, again, people like Jesse and stuff do this out of the kindness of their heart and don't charge anything. Jesse has a Patreon, but he doesn't have many patrons that I'm aware of. I think he has, like, three. So, like, when you're, like, yelling at Jesse, like, hey, hurry up, you're being lazy or something, it's, like, I understand, like, why that would be frustrating. And I understand, like, why um, someone like Hendrix or something, like, may come off as bitter if people are, like, demanding, hey, update this or whatever. And then he's like, yeah, listen, uh, give me a break. Because I understand, like, that you can't just demand something when they're doing this for free. Like, they're doing this out of the kindness of it. Oh, Drew, thank you for becoming a member. I appreciate it. I need to become a member of UNS then. I'm always, like, lurking in your chat, but, like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not a member. So I'll probably return the favor very soon. But thank you very much. So welcome to the Lion Riders. Um, you can get, uh, what, what does the Lion Riders get? You get to vote on the mods, uh, so, or uh, next mod. So Maned Wolf was already created. But uh, you get to join the coalition of people who get to vote on what mods I make next and stuff. Even though I sort of make most of your mods for free. <laughs> um, just because I'm really liking the Beyond Wolf Nature Preserve. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. $7. That's not even minimum wage. Yeah, so like that, that, that's my point. Is I'm not trying to be like greedy or anything. But like I understand the frustration of, like you know... We're in coronavirus time or whatever, and so money and time are very much not a, you know, like, time is valuable, and so when people are spending their time creating mods that, you know, the community can just use for free, I understand why, like, you know, that could be kind of frustrating if you're getting yelled at. You're basically being bossed around by people who aren't even paying you. And it's like, okay, well then why would I listen to you? And unfortunately, that's just sort of the state of modding within Planet Zoo and JWE and stuff right now. And Planet Coaster to an extent. I know a lot of Planet Coaster YouTubers that are the 
or uh, modders that are in the exact same position. So, uh, tangent done. I apologize about that. <laughs> Welcome, Drufus. Rawr meow. Yeah. Actually, some people could be coming up on... Because, again, I, I know you were talking with Estan about how, like, a lot of people are going to be making the swap over from... To, like, in your case, like, blue giraffes and stuff. But, um, we're probably going to be seeing uh, a lot of people swapping over to some bronze lions very soon. They're going to be... You you have like kind of cool stuff because they're all basically the same or uh, different animals. Mine are all the same, so you're always going to be a lion of some sort. But um, we should be seeing our first wave of bronze lions uh, for one month. So this might be too big, but honestly, w anyone know what the smallest glass piece in the game is? Because if possible, I want to make this, I want to make a transparent, um, like, corn dispenser. Perfect. Okay, this is actually perfect. So watch this. So we're going to make a custom corn dispenser. I'm probably going to have to put this on the workshop. I feel like people are going to want this. But this is going to be like a little corn um, dispenser thing. Hi, hon. Why? What happened? I talked myself out of it. Oh. I was kind of interested in seeing you as a brunette again. Okay, well then I'll die tonight. Okay, well, <laughs> well, okay. I didn't, you didn't need that much convincing, apparently. Well, I'm afraid that, like, with my eyebrows and my skin tone, it's just gonna look really bad. You'll never look bad, honey. Oh, thank you. Corn. I wonder what I want to make the corn out of, though. That's the only thing. Uh, I'm thinking gutters, but I'll have to see. So let's do this now. That's too much. All right. Bracket. Gutter. We're gonna just experiment for now. Ooh, this could be cool actually. Cause this actually works well as like the little like gutter thing that you... Like babe, you know at uh, Southwick's where they have the little corn dispenser? I'm gonna use this gutter at Southwick's. Uh, whereabouts? In the deer forest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... But I'm the, the one at the entrance or the one at the exit? Just any of them. Just okay. like, you know how they have like the little dispenser thing that you can use? I'm yeah. going to use a gutter piece as that dispenser. That'll work. And I think it's like 25 cents each. Yeah, uh, which by the way, I know technically this is Roger Williams, but uh, if anyone would like a little hack for Southwick Zoo in particular to get around their deer forest uh, and needing to pay for the um, corn... If you just grab, yeah, if you pick up some leaves off the trees in the forest, uh, you can feed the deer for free. They, the deer don't care. They'll literally eat the leaves over corn most of the time. Or you can just pick up the kernels that fall on the ground. Yeah, or you could do that. You could do that as well. Because usually... <laughs> zoo hacks. Zoo hacks. Get your zoo hacks here. Okay, honestly, give me a sec. I'm just going to move this roof out of the way just for now, because it's kind of annoying me. While I work on the, the corn dispenser. BZ, what's up, BZ? Welcome to the stream. We're working on a corn dispenser for our goats in our petting zoo. Alright. can use this little Lego. Playing Tetris with the gutter pieces right now. Trying to fill it in. Perfect, there we go. Alright, now to make the corn. So, there's a couple of ideas I have. Okay, this might be a better idea. I don't know how big the full stops are. Uh, that's questionable. I could Okay, full stop is an option. Let me put that somewhere. Full stop is an option. 
I'm planning on uninstalling and installing the game so I can get rid of the equal mod. Does that get rid of your DLCs? Uh, it'll get rid of any and all. It, it'll it'll get rid of all mods, but it won't get rid of your DLCs. If you just do a full reset, it'll literally just get rid of the um those uh the mods you have installed. It'll just give you a clean version of the game. So that that's another thing is if if for whatever reason you un you installed mods incorrectly or something of that nature, uh, all you have to do is just um verify your game integrity and then you'd be good. Can you make a white-tailed deer with a pronghorn? Um, maybe. That sounds like a thing that Drew is going to request me to make. I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't be surprised if they want me to make some sort of deer species. So white-tails might be an option. Uh, so I definitely could, and I'll have to see about that, because... Again, I have to now work on... Obviously, we have a new Lion Rider King, so I'll be working on that Gwenon mod for them. And then, yeah. So I'll have to... I'll see about that. But I'm not opposed to it. Um, what is the smallest... I'm trying to think of like something that I could cleverly make corn on. Ooh, what about brackets? Give me a sec. Planet Zoo sign bracket. Give me a second here. So, if I make it a corn color. This could maybe work. We're just going to try this for now. Oh god, I didn't really think this one through because now I have to grab it out of the glass. <laughs> um, because then if I do this, that could maybe work. Deer would be cool. The other thing I could do is I technically, yeah, I made this corn for the, uh, this is actually like an ear of corn, but I made it for my, um, yeah, honestly, that, that might that might work as well. Um, this was made for my um, Halloween zoo, so honestly, that's not a terrible Planet idea. Boo. If I make it out of what'd you say? Planet Boo. Planet Boo. Roger Williams Park Boo, and then we had Par Roger Williams Park New for the New Year's. Um, <laughs> you can say. Park. Yeah, I mean, uh, for Chinese New Year, it's the Year of the Bull, so that's going to be Roger Williams Park Moo. We're just going to... Everything's Roger Williams. Because so, I think gutter pieces win. So, we'll try that. So, let's see what I can do here. Let's get off a line to surface for now. All right, let's see how many corns I can fit in here. This bad boy can hold so many coins. I can approximately fit three corns wide. But if I flip it around, it'll make it like... S I can basically double that amount. So if I show this side, I can do this. This is this is thinking big brain energy, everyone. This is gonna I love how like literally most of this stream has just been me working on this stupid corn corn dispenser. Oh come on. Yeah, there we go. So now if I just kinda do this. It's only going to be about halfway full, because very rarely do 
the corn dispensers at this, you know, get filled all the way. So we'll do this. And then we will flip it around like so. And then we can do the same. Look at all these green lions in the chat. All my all all you beautiful beautiful people being members. I appreciate you very much. And I appreciate you putting up with whatever the heck this is right now. Critters, welcome. Welcome to the stream. We are making a corn dispenser for my goats. Just like that. <laughs> Being very just like that. There we go. Excellent. So now I just want to quickly make a roof for the corn. God, I hate the classical music. <laughs> the classic, classic music just scares me. There we go. Just add a little bit. It's like popcorn. You just fill up the top. Beautiful. And now we can finally just add in the, the final little details that I wanted to add, which were the little... Uh, Dispenser scoop. Like so. Look at that. Isn't that like a nice little thing? So that's where you scoop them out. And then we can do a little thing. Give me a Planet Zoo bracket. Or actually, what do I want to use? I could use that. Where's the Noto one? Noto. Uh, let's not use that one. Let's just go planet bracket. There we go. That looks good. I think that's a very acceptable looking corn dispenser. So now I can just copy the whole shebang. Like I said, I'm probably just going to have to... We'll do that for now. And then if I go in... Select all of this, deselect that, deselect that, so deselect it, nope. I hate this, why is the deselect, I, I, was it Drew that was mentioning it yesterday? Someone was. But like the deselect button for some reason is like, in Planet Zoo is like a reselect button. 
where like you'll try to deselect stuff and instead it'll be like, oh, so you want to deselect this, but also re like select this. And it's like, no, why would I want to do that? And like, that's like the dumbest part of Planet Zoo here. Would a nine banded armadillo be pus or work? Um, you'd have to ask Drew. I'm not totally sure. Um, because I know they're going for like more of like a swamp area, and I know armadillos kind of live in like the desert part of the United States. But you could definitely ask. I don't know if Drew is still lurking in the chat. Multi-select is super borked. Yeah, exactly. I don't understand. <laughs> like, it's just like a weird thing. So let me let me do this. Hmm. This is going to be a tough one, but I'm going to try. There's just two little white signs inside of the, uh, yeah, right here. I got it, though. <laughs> I got it, but then immediately I'm going to lose it because now I needed to copy it and I can't. Great. I had it, and then I lost it, because I need to do this. So, flip it around, like so. There we go. And then, even though I did that, I just move it over, like that. And I don't know why my corn dispenser went away, but... We're going to work with it. Armadillo could be cool. Yeah, I'll have to, like, again, I'll have to see, because... An armadillo might be tough. It's possible, but it might be tough to do. Now, as, you, as anyone who knows me knows, though... Anything I do is usually seemingly impossible, but I always find a way to make it work. So, you know, if if demand is high enough, like I always say, you know, I will I will think about doing it because I do always like a challenge. That is sort of a thing I do enjoy. All right, so let's do this. Grab this color. I love how, like, the goat um, exhibit isn't anything spectacularly difficult, but yet I'm making it incredibly difficult for no reason. So let's extend these planks down. There we go, do that, and then move all of them over to here. And then I need one more in the center. There we go, okay, so that's good. Um, just out of curia or uh, interest of doing this correctly, let's make this all sand. Should I make this coarse sand? I'm debating if I want to make this coarse sand or the normal sand. No, coarse sand definitely. Coarse sand has that kind of like this is a petting zoo look to it. The most wild thing is. Then near my home is an opossum that was on the other side of the fence. Yeah, we have opossums all the time around here. 
we have all sorts of woodland creatures around where I live. We have uh, my neighbor Phil uh, lives down the street, and uh, super nice old man. Um, poor guy's been living with like a big uh, tumor in his stomach for like the longest time, and but you know, defying all odds, he's lived like you know twelve years since he was diagnosed with like. What, uh, I, I, I'm not sure what kind of cancer it is, but, like, yeah, he's been defying, like, all odds with it. Um, but, like, yeah, what he does is, like, he'll, like, feed the animals in the local area. And so, because he's been feeding them, our geese, turkey, bunny, deer, rabbit, every animal, po squirrel, all these animal populations just, like, gather around his house like he's, like, Snow White or something. Um, and so occasionally we'll have a coyote, and so we also have, like, stuff like porcupines and opossums and raccoons and stuff that like to come by all the time as well. But then we have, obviously, um, the occasional, um, coyote come through, and because of, um, like, and so Phil will, like, see these coyotes, and then in the middle of the night, you'll just hear, like, a gunshot go off. He's killed, like, eight coyotes in our neighborhood, like, in the last year. <laughs> like, because uh, just it'll just be in the middle of the night, you'll just hear a gunshot go off. Yep, got another coyote. And, like, yeah, he has a very good track record at taking the coyotes out. So, we're, knock on wood, we've been pretty good about not having too many coyotes in my neighborhood. But... It's all thanks to our, our local hero, Phil. Literally, what I described just sounds like a, a storyline that would be in the Beyond True <laughs> Nature Preserve. Oh yeah, Phil goes out there and feeds all the woodland creatures and then shoots one of the coyotes whenever they come in. <laughs> like, but yeah. Um, so that's just kind of what he does all the time. Let's do this. Let's select these. These little blueprints. Or uh, this little... Why does it never select the whole thing? I don't know why. It never selects the whole thing. It's kind of annoying. But that is good. Alright. Where is my string fence that I made last time? There it is. My beautiful string fence. Phil's gun. <laughs> gun and meat. Yeah, uh, but like, it's been a, a blessing and a curse because um, even though, like, you know, obviously, like, you know, not having coyotes in the neighborhood has been nice. The we have a like an overabundance of stuff like deer and um especially t turkeys and geese. Like, I can't tell you how many times Julie and I have, like, almost ran over any of these creatures. I have a video of me trying to get to work and then they're just crossing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they all, like, like to cross the road in, like, a, a, a line. Um, and, yeah, it's... And my brother is deathly afraid of birds, so I should mention that as well. So it's always funny because like, he has a, like, clear phobia of birds. It actually started from Roger Williams. He was, uh... The the hornbill was I'm gonna he's live streaming right now I could probably like you know go like tease him about this but um the first one of the first times like we went to Roger Williams or something I had the hornbill exhibit and it was out and we were with my dad and then like the hornbill just leapt towards him or something and then instead my brother goes shoot birdie go away. <laughs> and like he he just like freaked out. Even though the thing is behind chain link fence and whatever, he like still freaked out. And it was just the funniest thing. Um. Okay. So let's see. Is this gonna be a situation where I once again go crazy with the detail? Probably. So let's try this. So they have these signs for the different goats. Like basically like all the goats have names and stuff. And so I am going to try to make these signs the best I can. Hmm. 
Now, how well it's going to work out is up for debate, but we're going to try. So we're just going to try. I mean, the big thing here is accuracy with scale. But if I can potentially get accuracy with uh, visuals as well, that would be nice. So there should be four boxes. So we'll do this. So that's about the size of one box, two boxes. Three boxes. And, okay, so in this case, we might need them a little bit taller. Just a hair, just a hair taller. And that should be good. Now, I don't know the names of the goats off the top of my head, of course, but we are going to try this. See you, Philly. Thanks for dropping by. Appreciate it. Also, you know, the main, look, the main wolf looks really good. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Like I said, I, I want to hold off on releasing the main wolf, even though it's done. I'm, I'm going to hold off on releasing that one until Jesse or Hendrix figure out what that what is causing that issue with the tail. Because I, I don't know what's up with it, but I don't, I, I don't feel comfortable releasing something unless I know it's going to be about as high quality as you're going to get from modding. And that's why, like, for the longest time, I didn't release stuff like the out ad. Um, it wasn't, like, just because even though the out ad was fine, you know, like, in the video, um, usually, like, stuff like that has some sort of underlying issue. And in that case, it did. It had um, a little bit of a, a weird situation going on. All right. So... Here's what we're going to do, and this is going to be the, a very weird process, but one that I did recently. So, first off, the 2D shapes are your best friend. Forget gutter pieces, forget brackets. The 2D font pieces that I'm using right now are the greatest invention we've ever gotten for Planet Zoo. Because, for instance, I want to just cover one side of this sign with white. So all I do, one side's covered, the other isn't. Excellent. And then I just select these things. Oh, is the music dead? Give me a sec. The music stopped for a second, so let's fix that. There we go. Much better. I just finished online school. How do you make such good mods, Lion Rider? Uh, time. Time and a lot of trial and error. Because uh, I've made a lot of bad mods, but I've also made a lot of good mods. So that's sort of been the thing, <laughs> is uh, trying to get that the best you can. So it's it's sort of like building. It's just it just takes a lot of time to get everything to look right. Okay, why are they placing like this? That's weird. I just don't know why it's placing it like this. Because ideally what I'm doing is kind of making like a sheet of white and then copying it. So like these three pieces of white, I want to split and then just duplicate. But of course the pivot is broken, so that's fun. But that's fine. I'm fine with that. That looks presentable enough. Let's 
So we'll do that now. And then... I really like the Red River Hog mod. Thank you. I really hate it. <laughs> um, I, I have a lot of people always saying how much they love the Red River Hog, and I'm just like, I that is easily one of my least favorite mods. I am not proud of it. It looks okay, but it's just not where I think it should be, um, unfortunately. So, I appreciate the compliment, but I, I will just never accept it because, for me, I just am ashamed. I'm a proud to announce this is my third live stream from you. Oh, well, you know, I appreciate it as well. I have been enjoying live streaming. It's definitely been fun. So let's make some goats. <laughs> so again, they're going to be very minimalistic goats, of course, but goats nonetheless. So... Oh boy, that was a little lag spike. What mod is the goat? Well, the goat will be... It, it's going to be a Nubian goat, specifically. And it will be replacing the doll sheep. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to get the... Uh, the... What's it called? Shetland sheep mod done. Uh, which, you know... I'll have to see, just because... Like, like the issue now is with the without the custom animals just yet um i'm still like reserved to like in the the case of like the babarusa the guinea hog and the red river hog i'll use the um warthog rig so i only had three slot or uh, two slots to begin with i had the male and the female and i could have used the baby uh, you know technically but i just don't normally um and so that's just kind of the issue um I'm trying to figure out myself. So let's do this for the goat. We'll give it gray horns. Who was the person that told me to use it? It might have been just Goron who was using these. Like, if you just sink, sink them ever so slightly, you can get just the tip of the, the comma to work as an eyeball. Or, like, something similar. Like if I do this. All right, I think that's fine because I doubt I'm going to get much more advanced beyond that. I could, but you know, I'm good with accepting that as my go so now to make the different color variations so so i need like a brown goat
give it a darker horn. The anaconda would be cool to mod. I mean, I will be doing an anaconda. I just don't know if I'm going to be doing it as a... Um, it probably won't be a habitat animal. It'll just be an exhibit animal. But I will be doing one. So if I do that, that looks good. That one has big horns. So let's just start moving these into place. Because that's going to be the biggest pain <laughs> is doing this. Um, oh, goody. Yeah, this is sort of what I worried about a little bit. I kind of made them a little bit too big. But we can work with it. We can definitely work with it. Okay, that's one slotted into <laughs> location. This one. This should be fun. From certain angles, they look like statues that people make. just had it a second ago. There we go. That one's good. Let's make one more variant. Because, like, this one's a little bit big for my liking. Or at least the way it's, it's looking in the actual slot. So, if I can make kind of like a, a smaller version, we should be good. Oh, I love this. <laughs> Yeah, this is definitely a toughie, though. So, if I do this, and I move the body up a little bit... Yeah, I kind of like this. So this is just going to be like a smaller goat or something. Which they do have. They have two... Uh, I think they're called Pygmy Dwarf Goats. Um, and so this is just going to be kind of that representative. It's like a, a little little goat. Um, and what color it can be, I don't know, but we're going to find out in a second. Um, it's going to be like this color with a little... If possible, I want to give it, like, a little, like, stripe or something that's white. Yeah, like that. And you know what? This can be, like, a little black detailing in the face. There we go. Now, it is Z-fighting, so let me fix that quick. Hmm. Come on. 
Why do I put so much detail into this? That's kind of cool. Not really what I want, but it's kind of cool. Hmm. There we go. That's what I wanted. So let's do this now. So this one can go above. Oh, wait, what the heck? Oh, because I was trying to make a duplicate. That's what the reason. What happened while I was having dinner? Uh, not too much. We made a corn dispenser, and now we're working on some signs for the goats. Um, and then, yeah, what time is it? 2.40? Like I said, today might be a longer stream, just because I've been wanting to do a lot of work on Roger Williams, and so this is just going to give me a chance to do that. There we go. Nice. So we have that. Hello, Peter. Welcome. I keep, I keep saying Peter. I think it's, I, I'm sure it's just Peter, but like, but I keep saying Peter, like for some reason. Uh, so let's do this. So let's make you like a, yeah, like a lighter shade of gray. And then your horns are going to be curved backwards. Yeah. Yeah. That looks cool. And you can have a little beard, too. You know what? You're going to have a little beard. This is our first bearded goat. Yeah, that looks good. I like that. <laughs> you guys like my little goat? Goat? design stream where I design little two-dimensional goats for this sign. <laughs> I hate this farmyard so much and yet I'm really enjoying myself like working on it. Like in real life we never visit it but this is fun. All right, here's what we're gonna do though. This is a big old goat. This 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 is a big meanie goat. There we go. Okay. So, did you already make the goat mod? I didn't. Not yet. So, let's use the Planet Zoo bracket. Ooh, this could be tough. This might be a toughie. Let's try to be clever here. What is the best way to hide it? We could try this way. Okay. I'm fine with that. That that looks good. So that has all the little goat names. Looks pretty good. I definitely like this sign. Too bad I just deleted it. <laughs> I literally just deleted one of the goats because I was trying to move it on the ground. Hello, Sydney. Hello, uh, R. Roche. Welcome to the stream. You don't say what Roger Williams means. Or, uh, W. It stands for Roger Williams Park Zoo, if, if, if you were wondering. I know, I know it's weird for, like, new people to the channel and stuff who might not, you know, recognize it or something. But, yeah, whenever I say RWPZ, uh, it's, it's Roger Williams Park Zoo. 
So yeah, honestly, this looks good. So let's just kind of combine it. And probably not going to do as crazy of... Because again, there are objectively three of these signs. And so it would be kind of annoying if I made, you know, 12 or uh, yeah, 12 individual goats for each of them. So uh, we're probably just going to keep the general layout the same. It's just going to have slight color variations. I'll try just to make it less, you know, obvious that I just copied it three times. But yeah, that looks good. So, so for this middle one, we'll try to recolor it the best we can. Come on, come on. I knew, I knew it would be Z fighting, so that's why I was trying to make it so that I didn't have this issue, but of course I do. Come on. Stop having issues here. This one's going to have a white spot there. Your horn's going to be like, like this. And it's going to be darker. The super apparent one, you're going to have a... You, buddy, you're going to have a little horn. That one has little horns. R.I.P. for him. Dutch Army. Oh my God! What's up with this? Hello, I'm Dutch. All the all the Dutch. We have a bunch of Europeans here. Last time there was like 472 people on New. Year. No, there was no way there was 400 people on New Year's. They might have had 400 views by the end of New Year's Day, but we had we did have quite a bit of people though. We did have like um, 50 or so. I don't know how many are here today. Obviously, I know I know it's not going to be as popular, uh, just because especially um, this is a bad time usually for Americans. So, so I know a lot of my American viewers couldn't even make it today. So, I am taking that into consideration. Where, obviously, it's not going to be as high of a count of people. Alright, delete that, move this. That looks good, that looks good. We change the color of this one. You can have some of them be duplicates and no one really cares, it's just... You have to make sure the majority of them are unique. So this one probably needs to be a lighter color. What are some other goat colors that exist? I know it's just pretty much black, white, gray, and um, like tannish or brown. In America, it's 3 o'clock. Yeah, I know. In America, it's 3 o'clock, which doesn't seem that bad, but um, I also have a, a younger fan base, so 3 o'clock means school 
for a lot of people and I also have a lot of people that even if they're not in school they're in work so that's something you have to also take into consideration so even though like you know you might be like oh well it's three o'clock you know it's like mid-afternoon a lot of people are going to be in uh either work or school that's why uh people like Estan and stuff have a, a better uh time spot because they uh Estan does like his streams kind of later in the day around like six o'clock or so Oh god, it's the short-faced goat. There we go. Um, it's all looking good, looking good. This one, I want angled back a little bit, just not as much. Okay, someone pick a color. Pick a color for this goat. It's a goat, babe. <laughs> I'm not making a purple goat. First person to give me a realistic color for the goat, I will make it that color. Did I select it all perfectly on the first try? Anyone? I'm about to select a random color. Um, white. Sure. We're getting a white goat. It's going to look terrible against the white background, but that's fine because there is a white goat. So we're going to make it kind of like that color. And then to make it stand out a little bit, we're going to make its eye and horn also what, or uh, like a darker color. And there we go. There's our goats. So that is the goat habitat done. So that looks good. Um, I'm just looking around to see if there's any other things I need to touch up about the habitat and other than adding in a what are those things called rubbing rubbing post other than adding in one of these I don't really see anything else I'm gonna need to do to this habitat so we can probably just get started on the the final bit So let me just quickly make this green, because I don't know if they just get them in bulk or something, but every single climbing for, or, uh, rubbing pillar that Roger Williams has is like the same color of green for some reason. But yeah, that looks good. So now, uh, yeah, I guess we can start work on this part, which is going to be the entrance to the the goat feeding station. Yes, that works. All right, so it's very similar on both sides, but we're gonna try to match it the best we can. So I need some of these and we're gonna just make it all manually. I think last time I used like some of the, the basic wooden stuff that's available, but I'm just gonna make this whole thing custom this stream. Cause last time I was sort of in a rush to like just finish cause like my computer is crashing. But since things are good right now, I'm comfortable just you know, working on this to look nice. Okay, I'm gonna select all three. What are the odds that it actually lets me 
Mm, oh, it actually did. That's nice. I was almost positive it wasn't going to let me just select all of the uh, the pillars and like have them work out the way I wanted. So let's... So I guess actually this area right here that I have isn't really how it looks so let me move just some of these there's like a little bush section right here because this area that I'm making right now goes right up against the wall. So it's sort of more like this. And then this fence takes over. And then this area we're just going to plant. Do you have a reference? I do. I am using uh, Google uh, Earth or uh, Street View right now. So if anyone wants to follow along with what I'm doing, I'm just at, uh, just type in Roger Williams Park Zoo on Google, uh, Google Street View, and then I'm in the Alex and Ani Barnyard area. So it's kind of like right between the, as an icon, like Education Center area and Face of the Rainforest. And I am just working on that little section right now. Fence placing has to be objectively the worst part of Planet Zoo, though. If you're if you you're like me and place cust a lot of custom fences, because it's just so tedious to do. And I like to line them up and stuff, which takes even longer. So stuff like that, you know. That looks good now. And I will say that, like, you know, I, I could have gone a little bit more creative liberty with this, but, like, I'm literally tracing the exact uh, Google Earth top-down view of the farm, so, like, the pathway and stuff line up perfectly and stuff. Like that. This is looking really good, though. And that is where we will end that little section of fencing. And I have a wall with posters from Roger Williams. They're on the workshop. Oh yeah, I, I put up a couple of little things from Roger Williams um, on the workshop if anyone wanted to check those out and stuff. Um, I have a lot of murals from Roger Williams because I did do a lot of those type of things. Stained wood. What is this wood color? I need this wood. Trying to stay consistent here. Grab that, move this up. There we go. That lines up very well. Um, 
past that, we can move these into here. I don't believe... Oh, there is. Is there? I can't tell. Just give me a sec. Do you remember last stream with the raccoon? Yes, I do remember last stream. That was... Uh, Maria was here early. I don't know if she still is. But I was, like, wondering about that. I was like, what's up with that? She didn't give me the evidence of whether or not it was legitimate or not. So I'm, I'm leaning towards it being fake. But... Again, I am still open. If she took photos, I would very much, I, I would like to see. I would, I would like, I would like to, you know, give her a fair shot to prove the raccoon incident was in fact a legitimate crisis. Alright, I kind of like that. That looks pretty good. Uh, of course, except <laughs> on that side, it's like that. Okay. So, it's sort of like that, and then there's a gate to get in, which we can make using these. So give me a sec here. Are there's a are are you there's a phone B DLC for Planet Zoo? What? <laughs> Nick, I think alpacas don't have enough space and will escape. They'll be fine. That's plenty of space. And I I, I I'm not super concerned about if they'll escape or not. Um Because the other thing is I usually have welfare off and stuff like that. And I, I, I do a lot of little things that you can't really notice off camera. That usually makes it so that my animals always stay put. Except the gibbons. The gibbons escape all the time and I don't know why. Because I they literally, they're the only animal in my entire zoo with a roof over their exhibit as well. And yet they escape. Because they climb onto the roof by teleporting. And it's the weirdest thing. Uh, did you mean that you think there's going to be a pocket edition of Planet Zoo? Because I would highly doubt that. Very doubt we would ever see a mobile edition of Planet Zoo. It's just too taxing of a game. Okay, let's... So right now we're working on the gate. So this is how you enter the um, goat exhibit. So if we do this... I know I didn't select the last fence, but that should be fine. All right, that's not terrible looking. So now we can just kind of grab everything again and just move it to the other side. And then I have to do the hand washing station and... Anyone know if there's like a sink or something on the workshop already? Just that I don't have to do the hand washing station. My guess is probably not, but you know. It's worth a shot asking. Um, let's do this. Do this. I 
I just need a thicker piece of wood for the center of this uh, beam. There we go. That's looking a lot better now. The center beam just like looked a little too thin for my liking. And now I can actually fit in a poster of sorts. I wish there was a planted aquarium. I think the zoo is rated sad because some animals don't have enough space. There is a couple of snakes. Okay, I'll check those out then. Because, yeah, if I can get away with just using someone else's sink and modifying it, that saves me a ton of time. Um, do I want to use... What signs do I have at my disposal? The East Asia sign could work. I think I'll use it actually. Uh, okay, never mind. It's trying to flip all sorts of crazy ways. Angle snap is like my best friend and my worst enemy. It'll sometimes help me, but then other times it'll like, yep, do this. <laughs> Where? I would just like it straight, please. Not crooked. There we go. Okay, I'm fine with that. That is good for now. Because I need... This is going to be the roll sign. So, put that up there. And then, like, a light thing here. And then... Contact yard rules. Okay, it's going to try to do that. In that case, we're going to do this. Excellent. This is a technique I use a lot if you ever want to just get a bunch of quick text to like fill an area. Oh, the zoo is closed. That explains a lot. Oh, right now in Roger Williams? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have the zoo closed. Just because I, I, I don't like to keep the zoo open. It if, if it was open, it'd be way too laggy. And I probably couldn't, like, stream or anything. So, I usually keep it closed. It's really only good for, like, taking the occasional like little like fly through of the zoo or something but like even then it's very rare that it I'll do that um so I could do that as one of the signs but by doing so, I kind of now want to cover up the rest of this beam. But honestly, for now, I think it's fine. Alright, so, hand washing station. What do we got for arctic wood? So the arctic wood, I need loose pieces of arctic wood walls. So 
So that could work. But. Alright, we're going back to standard Planet Zoo wood, though, unfortunately. Because I want to do something else. So let's try. Um. That wooden plank actually isn't bad. But it's always safer to play with flexicolor, I think. Flexicolor everything is just the way to go. Yeah, um, never mind. So if we do this, we'll get a decent looking thing. We can try this one out. So hopefully I can make a decent enough hand washing station over here. I like the country music while we're working on this. When will you think you when do you think you'll add the animals? Very, very end. I I, I never add my animals in until the very end of a habitat. There's just it would just cause way too much lag. And so just it's not really that worth it to like add them in immediately. Like as an example, the last time I tried to add the animals in last stream, like it might have been even you that was asking, oh can you add them in? Um it literally like fried my computer. Like because it doesn't like me adding in animals while um streaming and doing whatever. The park is just too laggy for that. Or it's not too laggy, it's just it can be too laggy. When you play around with it, normally it's fine, but yeah, specifically while I'm streaming, it's it's very bad. But that makes sense, because obviously it's trying to do a lot right now. So, let's see. I need like a bucket. What do we got for bucket? That ain't a bucket. Or not the bucket I need. Uh, what would that be? What I almost need is like a uh, planter type thing. Bead shape. That's too big. That could work, maybe. I'll come back to that one. Um, but filters, property, flexi color. Because I need a little round metal bucket that's blue. What is this? How big are you? Uh, a little too big. What's your favorite Roger Williams episode? Hmm. That's a tough one. Because I like a lot for, like, different reasons. Um, hmm. I don't know. I like, because... Like, obviously, like, my favorite animal, of course, is the elephant. So, you know, I like the elephant episode. Um, I could say my least favorite was the elephant house episode. Because that just didn't turn out as well as I would have wished it to. 
World of Adaptations Episode 1 was pretty good. I did enjoy that one. Um, yeah, uh, I do like the out ad enclosure. That's a good one. Binturong was probably the most relaxed episode. Love the Marco Polo Trail. Yeah. Yeah, like the... Like, I'm just, like, enjoying working on anything that, like, you know, has to do with, like, getting the details just right. Um, so, as an example right now, I'm trying to find a good thing to make this bucket out of, and the best thing I'm seeing are primitive pieces, which I was trying to avoid if possible, but that might be what we end up using. Wait... This could be interesting. Okay. Depending how I orient this, this could work really well. So, if I did this, and then... <sighs> no, nah, it's, it's just too long. If it was just the top bit, that would have been great. Um... But yeah, we're looking like, it's looking like primitive pieces. Alright, well, you know, can't say I didn't try. So, primitive pieces, you win. You once again get to reign supreme as... What I end up using for most things. So let's see. So, Leaf, if you don't mind me asking, like, where are you from? Like, because I don't think you're from Rhode Island, but you said you've been to Roger Williams. So, like, are you from New England or you used to live here or something of that nature? Because I just highly doubt you visited here. Um, you visited Roger Williams as a tourist. That that seems unlikely. So let's see. Oh, you're from Providence. I had no idea. <laughs> I actually didn't know you were from Providence. That's, well then, there you go. I, I literally didn't know there were that many other creators out there that lived in New England, let alone Rhode Island specifically. Because <laughs> I was saying for a while that, like, once Corona's done or whatever, I wanted to do, like, almost like a Roger Williams meetup or something for, like, just a handful of people that, you know, do live around here, like Dill, and I have a few people on my server and stuff. But, um,. And so I was like, yeah, well, you know, after coronavirus is all said and done, we could do, like, a meetup. And we were like, is that even worth it? There's not even that many people. But, yeah, I mean, if I could at least get, like, five or six people, that, that would be, like, you know, that would warrant a meetup, I'd say. Um, let's see. So... The other little thing is there's... So why is... I don't know why the Planet Zoo bracket isn't under flexi color, even though it is flexi color. That's, like, really weird to me. I don't know why that's the case. But... There we go. There's the little spout of the, uh, the hand-washing station. So I know I asked about sinks before, but uh, never mind, because I'm I ended up just making a custom sink anyway. <laughs> That's I mean it's it's probably fair to begin with, because like their sinks aren't even standard sinks. They're like trying to be like this weird like rustic looking mess. Like the uh, the hand washing stations are like birdhouses. So. 
I do want to pause my recording really quick because I want to jump on the workshop really quick because I believe, I think Drac made some tiny birdhouses recently. And if possible, I want to try to use them. My guess, they're probably going to be too big because tiny for, you know, tiny for what other people, like, you know, mention is not ever tiny enough. So we're going to try to look at that. So we'll go to Planet Zoo. And then we'll look up Missoula, of course. Haribo is on the workshop. Not surprised about that at all. Or no, I don't want to look up Sink. I want to look up Birdhouse. Okay, so... Oh, just Goron, sorry. It wasn't Drag, it was just Goron. But, small birdhouse. How small are you? Because I need like a hummingbird birdhouse here. Come on, be... Please be tiny. Oh my... Just Goron, you're the... You're the best. This is exactly what I needed. It's practically the perfect size. It's just about the best sizing I could ask for, all things considered. Great. We now have that whole section of the farm done. So, now... Uh, I just quickly want to just decorate over here, just a, a little bit, you know, it's just a little barren. So we can add in maybe a birch tree, let's add in an ash tree. Yeah, that looks good. I like that. Maybe another ash tree over here that's a little bigger. Just add some some density to this area. And then... This is another thing I like to do. I like to use whatever foliage the trees are as their bushes, just that they're color coordinated. And then let's just see what other quick, quick little things I could throw in here. Arrowwood bushes, that could work. Um, Bracken, yeah, we can throw one of you, one or two of you in. There we go. Okay, so that just adds a little bit of density. I don't know if I want to add, yeah, let's just do another ash tree instead. The other one was just a little too tall for my liking. Okay, so... Now, this area over here, uh, this whole strip basically, has nothing. This is just a bunch of planters and stuff. So... Let's do that. Let's add some stuff. So we'll add a beech tree over here, if I can. That's a big beech tree. Uh, then I was kind of like the smaller one. That's a little lag spike. So we'll do that. We'll add a little, just a little bit of foliage along the side. Bramble bush. We'll add a little bramble bush. I'm cool with that. They do have some like weird. Is that elephant grass? Yeah, it's definitely some kind of grass type, and elephant grass is definitely the closest. Um, so let's see what our flower options are. It's a thing that's lacking in the game is flowers. 
they all just look too similar. None of them are big. Some nettle. Get add some nettle. A little elm tree over here. Elephant grass of varying heights. Just some nice little little entrance into our our little section here. Add a little rose bush on the end. And then some Arrowwood, maybe? We'll have to see. Maybe another bush like this. That one can have a little bit of a... little bit of a uh, height difference. And now... Let's add some trim. We want to add a little trim to the side of this thing. I want an aviary pack. Everyone, everyone wants an aviary pack. We want flying birds. Up, uh, rally, please don't spam. Don't spam if you can. Up, uh, you're gonna spam. I'm gonna have to to. Put you in timeout. There we go. No spamming. Uh, we need a thing. Give me a sec. Where's the trims? Oh, did I just have it? Roof trim. No wall. What is it called? Painted brick trim. Yeah, there we go. That's what I needed. So I can just make this and then make it like a like a lightish tan, I guess. Yeah, something like this. Just something that's just inviting and looks nice. And then I need a little bit of a trim section right here. Because the tree is actually in a little planted area. So I'm gonna like basically just make this mulch and then have a little planted area for our tree. And then we will be done with this side. And then I'm just realizing then we have to do the whole other side. Which I might do off camera. I'll have to see. I, I'll have to see how I'm actually realistically feeling. Because we've been going for two and a half hours now. So I might want to take a break from streaming. You can already hear it in my voice. I have, I'm a lot less energetic than I was earlier. Try doing that for almost nine hours a day. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so that side of the zoo is, or the farmyard is done. Did you make the cows yet? No, they removed the cows. Unless you're talking about the fake cows. In which case, yes, I'm going to be working on those right now. Um, but we used to have actual cows, but they got rid of them. Because um, I don't know why. <laughs> the cows were kind of cool.
but I'll have to see. The fake cows. Oh yeah, I haven't done the fake cows yet, so I will be doing those. Um, the the famous ground benches, since <laughs> everything needs to be elevated. You know, I'm wondering if I could lower the ground. I might try that. Just because, like, yeah, right now it's ta the whole ground is raised, but I don't really know why it's raised. Because there's no real benefit to it being raised, so I might change that. It might have just been where I placed the original fences and stuff. And then they just kind of carried through or something. Unless it's to cover the path. But I don't see why I would have done that. So yeah, give me a sec. Because I, I don't really know why I had these raised to begin with. It had to be for the path reason, though. Alright. Give it a lag spike because I selected all the paths and now... I need one... One gizmo to pop up, please. Thank you. So yeah, it's looking like it was because of the path. I could raise it a little bit, though. Yeah. So that works. But yeah, it looks like it was just because it was like not covering the path entirely. But I can fix that. should be good now. Have you seen a YouTube channel called Zoo Tours? I have. And a channel like that can only exist because he lives in the Midwest. Because <laughs> any other area of the world literally couldn't pull that off just because there's not enough zoos. Like, I'd, lo I'd love to, like, do some, like, Zoo Tours New England or something, but, like, I just know for a fact that we just don't have enough zoos around here to, like, justify it, really. Um, let me grab this building. I'm kind of cheating a little bit. Oh boy, has anyone made a tractor on the workshop? Hey, I live in Roger Williams, my local zoo. I, pre are, I like watching your videos, and I'm, they're very good. It's just like the real life first. Thank you very much. That is the goal, Brody. It's just insane realism. Trying to be as realistic as possible. And uh, I like to think I'm doing a good enough job with it. Because it definitely, you know, is identifiable as Roger Williams. One of these days, I think I'm just going to crack and just be like, just because like, I'm so close to being done with the um, park. I think I'm just going to crack one day and just be like, screw it. I'm just going to do the Wetlands Trail and Phase of the Rainforest. And here you go. Here's the last episode. Because it's... I'm nearing that finish line and I'm trying to, you know, do my best to get to that point. So, here we go. Zoo Tours lives in Cincinnati. Exactly. If you live in Ohio, you're fine. Because Ohio has all of the best zoos in the country in one state. They have Columbus, Cincinnati, 
Um, Cleveland, like, like they're good. <laughs> Akron is even pretty good. Uh, they have the Wilds. Like, they just have so many things in Ohio, specifically in the surrounding areas, that, you know, he's good, you know. He, he's never going to have to worry about lacking content, because even if he then just crosses the border, which he has a few times, he has St. Louis and uh, Detroit and, like, all the Canadian ones. It's just a really good, solid area for zoos. And so as long as he does his occasional, like, vacation to San Diego or, like, New York with the Bronx or something, you're covering all the big zoos just by, like, kind of staying local. Um, and so that's just sort of the plus that he has versus a lot of the other people that, you know, could do that sort of thing. So we're going to do this. So I am going to have to make that cow. Uh, by the way, so has anyone checked up if there are... Um, there are tractors in the workshop. Thank you. I will check that out in a second. Because... I do want to do that. All right. Fake cows. So this should be interesting. So if I go into here and then we go into floor, I can do concrete. And then this area, I need to add some colorful rocks. Me and, me and, I mean, it, yeah, I was like, if he comes to, like, New England, like, Roger Williams is definitely the best zoo in New England by far. But, um, there's a couple other, like, because, yeah, that's just the issue is, like, New England, we have Southwick's, with, like, one of our best zoos is Southwick's, and that is a roadside zoo. And so that's, like, kind of, like, what the, um competition is is you have roger williams which is a pretty well put together zoo uh definitely the like cleanest and nicest looking zoo but then the rest of our zoos are you have franklin in boston which franklin park i've heard nothing but bad things about i've never been to it still even though i've lived in new england my whole life i wanted to go this year but the rona um but like i've heard nothing of bad things. Southwick's is better than, way better than Roger Williams. Correction. It was way better than Roger Williams. Back in the day, it was way better. The minute they lost their elephants, that's when everything changed. Because, you know, e elephants are a big currency for zoos, and Roger Williams and Buttonwood. Which Buttonwood is a glorified farm featuring two Asian elephants. Because they literally... Buttonwood has nothing. Buttonwood has... Uh, otters, red pandas, two elephants, and some farm animals. And that is their entire zoo. So they really have nothing to, you know, write home about. They're a nice smaller zoo from what I hear, but like... Beardsley has maned wolf. Yep. Like, like that's the thing, is just, the, the rest of the zoos around here are just so, they have nothing. Like, it's just, um, Franklin Park has gorillas and stuff, and that's nice, but, the, for, again, from what I hear, it's not very, that, very good. Beardsley, same thing, they're another smaller zoo that has technically big cats with tigers and, uh, jaguar. But that's it. Or actually, no, they don't even have Jaguar. They have Leopard. Um, so they have Siberian Tigers and Amur Leopard. But past that, nothing. Um, and that just kind of goes for, like, everything around here. It's just Roger Williams and Southwicks are the only... And Franklin Park are the only stable zoos. And of those, Franklin Park is just apparently so bad that, like... Um, a roadside zoo is outstaging them in the form of Southwick's. And that's just because Southwick's has 
every animal you can want, pretty much, um, for a medium-sized zoo. They have big cat. They have all the big cats. They have leopards, lions, and tigers. They have uh, chimpanzees. They're the only holder of chimpanzees in New England, uh, which beats out Roger Williams because we don't even have big cats. They have rhinos, which again Roger Williams doesn't have. Um, they just have a lot, and so strictly based off of that alone, you know, that's sort of where um, somewhere like Southwick takes advantage. In 2025, Cincinnati is getting a new four-acre elephant area. Yeah, like I, that's kind of what I'm saying is like you know, you know how I was saying like elephants are currency. You can look at Cincinnati, and that's the plus is everything in Cincinnati is just or uh, in Ohio. Like even if Akron, which is a small zoo relative, wanted elephants, I'm sure they could kind of fudge their way into getting them, just because. Most zoo expansions are nothing to write home about, except um, Akron like has gone from being literally a lemur farm to now they have lions with a new tiger exhibit on the way, and they just got like a whole savanna with giraffes and zebras and stuff. You look at their master plan and stuff, you see it in action, and you're like, oh yeah, they're actually doing stuff. You look at a Roger Williams master plan talking about tiger getting something like basic like tigers in 30 years and still like you know having your locals like kind of laugh at that idea like oh yeah we're getting tigers sure we are Roger Williams like that's when you know you're like not not the best at like you know management and stuff like that um and that's just kind of what, like, is a bit upsetting, is, like, I would totally have redone their master plan. Because Face of the Rainforest, I know everyone wants me to do it and stuff. That place is not worth it. It was, we had a perfectly acceptable Tropical America house, and then they spent, I think, $10 million on something that literally only added another otter species, which I'm really struggling this. Um, yeah, I really am struggling with this area. But yeah, like, that that was literally face of the other rainforest is. We got howler monkeys, a tamandua, and some giant otters. All stuff that, relative, isn't that special. It's just kind of like, okay, that's cool. Um, one person donated 50 million. Yeah, like, that's... And Roger Williams was supposed to get our state-of-the-art polar bear enclosure and couldn't afford it with eight million of state of taxpayer money, like because our elephants went over budget. So that's sort of you know what Roger Williams looks like. Like where if Cincinnati can get fifty million in donations, Roger Williams is struggling to get you know enough money with just standard tax money. I'm really struggling with this thing. It's this weird shaped, like, it's like a toolbox almost. And I'm trying to get it oriented correctly. It's just very difficult. Yeah, cause like now I need it to like fit over here. I'm determined to do this, though. Uh, what will you do for Flemish Giant? Yeah, so the chickens. That was another thing, because I know a lot of people were asking about those. I'm wondering that myself, because I, I could just do Drac, um, or maybe not Drac, maybe ZZ uh, chickens for that. But I will have to see. Because I don't know if I want to really make a mod for chickens. But I know some people might want that as like a prop or something. It definitely wouldn't be an animal mod like I've done for like, you know, like, oh, the pigs or, you know, warthogs or like alpacas or llamas. That would definitely be more along the lines of a prop mod, kind of like the eagles were. But I will have to see, because I don't know if I'm going to want to model a chicken. 
so I will see about that. I just love the architecture face of the Rainforest. Oh, I love the architecture, too. I hate the inside, because <laughs> the inside just kind of looks like a dump. Like, there's just no theming, really, on the inside. Um, and so I like the shape of the building. That's a plus, I will give it. I think it's just... It, the space itself, though, isn't utilized well. If we got some bigger animal, like a maned wolf or something like they planned, I'd be fine with it. But since we got literally nothing other than giant otters, which, you know, put those next to our existing otters that we already have, it's kind of like, you know, what's the point? <laughs> um, that's my only issue. Is It's just not anything special compared to what we could have gotten. Um, let's see. We need this kind of like off. Oh, my music stuff. It wants to play Planet Coaster music. I will not allow that to happen. Cincinnati's been struggling even though they got 68 million. Yeah, if that, like, I mean, I, I will say that, obviously, Cincinnati is giant compared to Roger Williams, but, like, uh, and I, I obviously, like, feel bad for all zoos, not just, you know, Roger Williams or whatever, um, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to money right now, because, like, obviously, it's very difficult to get money, um, during a pandemic, but, you know, that's a thing where it's, like, you know, if, if somewhere like Cincinnati is struggling with, you know, what what you say, like almost $70 million in donations, uh, you have to think about like, yeah, like smaller local zoos and like how bad they're doing. And that's just, that's been the real tragedy of like coronaviruses. I'm almost positive that a lot of zoos are going to go bankrupt from this. Um, definitely most aquariums. Because Mystic it was already kind of, like, struggling or whatever before this point. But, like, last time I went to Mystic, they were down to, like, a third of their normal fish. <laughs> like, so that means they definitely had to, like, sacrifice some stuff in order to, you know, just stay afloat. Um... If you're wondering what I'm doing right now, I'm trying to get... There's, like, a bunch of assorted farm crap <laughs> in this, uh, building that I'm trying to, like... Th so they have, like, a rope on the wall and stuff. And, um... Like, a pots and pans and stuff like that. I don't know how I'm gonna do the pot... Do we have... We don't have pots and pans, right? Like, we don't have anything like that. I wouldn't think. But, um... We're going to try. Nick, can you add the animal? I, again, I, I'm sorry. I just, I don't want to take the risk just because of the lag. That's the only thing I'm afraid of. Like, it just might crash my computer again. Which, by the way, I'm going to save this right now. Because in the off chance, um, something bad does happen again. Because we did do a lot of work today. So let me save that quick, because unlike I, I know a lot of like creators out there, um, <laughs> save like fifty different like you know versions of stuff, but I I only have one master file of Roger Williams, and that basically summarizes everything. Will you make a mod for the Tamandua? I will. So I think mod wise, animals I'm gonna mod. Howler monkeys, golden lion tamarin. Tamandua and the sloth. And then if I'm feeling up to it, I will try to do the um what's it called? Uh, why am I drawing a blank on it? Uh parrots. I will try to do like the blue and gold macaws. Um and I think that should, you know, give people a decent enough idea of the animals at the zoo. Because I obviously, if I did all the individual bird species and monkey species and stuff, I'd go insane. 
But I think those animals sound solid. Oh, Miss Queen, welcome. Hi, welcome to the stream. I totally missed you. Uh, when's the California sea lion coming out? Oh, so sea lion. That's a good question because <laughs> I've updated a lot, but I haven't updated the sea lion. And that is because I'm trying to figure out if it's worth updating because now that we have seals and stuff, I don't know if people are still cool with the bear seal or bear sea lion. Um, so obviously I've updated the, uh, what's it called? Uh, the harbor seal and stuff. So that's like an actual proper seal now. But I'm wondering about the sea lion. Because if people want me to, I can still update that. And then we can, you know, get the sea lion thrown in my aquatic pack and stuff. But we'll have to see. I think Roger Williams and Mystic should make a deal to combine. Um, I don't know about that, but what I did say is Roger Williams and Capron Park should combine. Because Capron Park is close enough to Roger Williams that transporting the animals wouldn't be hard. And they have pretty much all the animals that Roger Williams would need to make us really stand out compared to other zoos in the area. Because... Uh, Capron would give us lions, which is the big thing. Uh, but then they'd also give us like a lot of smaller things like meerkats and, uh, some South American animals. That would be nice. Just kind of a lot of smaller creatures and stuff. That would just be nice to have. I need a small metal bucket. Why do we not have buckets? To me, that just makes no sense, as we don't have metal buckets in the game for some reason. <laughs> I guess I'll just use the Asia bucket. It's not really what I want, but... Alright, now to make the cow. <laughs> so, as a placeholder... We're going to use one of the animal signs for sizing. So, what's a good size for the cow? The rhino is a good stand-in. Okay. So, we're going to just go over here. And we're going to size our cow based off of this rhino sign. I missed the kangaroo walkthrough. Well, you'll be in luck because we'll be getting a new one soon and getting rid of the Babarusa and the Binturong in the process. So, if you like the kangaroo walkthrough, we will be getting it again, according to the master plan. All right. Now time to make the cow. Okay. I'm almost wondering if I want to use the rhino as a base for it. <laughs> Like, if I use the uh, rhino and just build off of it. Mm. Could. Definitely could do that. This is when you know I've... I've, I've lost my mind is like when I start even like making signs <laughs> out of other animals. I have one, but at one, what cost? I mean, Julie will be happy Why? that they're getting rid of the Babarusa. Yeah, <laughs> Nobody wants it. Well, I have it on good authority that many people do want the Babarusa. No. They're wrong. They're wrong. <laughs> All right. Um, so here's what we're going to do. So 
so that's going to be the base of the legs. And then we're going to work our way up to the thighs. Give me a sec as I just quickly outline the cow with my cursor. Kind of, it's good. It might look like a sheep for a little bit. All right. Well, I'll see you, Leaf. Thanks for dropping by, though, and thank you very much for being a uh, big supporter. Thank you, Miss Queen, for the donation. I really appreciate it. I like to gamble. Will anyone match me or race me? <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Miss Queen. You're always. Very generous with your donations. Though if someone does, if someone does raise you, that would also be awesome. <laughs> Alright, so let's see if I do this. We can do that. Now we could do this for the cow. Cow general shape. And then I might want to move this forward a little bit. I don't think we'll get a betting petting zoo pack, but I hope we will. Yeah, I'm. I, I wouldn't bet on it either. I think petting zoo is a type of thing that uh, mods would definitely be more akin to. <laughs> they told me to tell you, Julie. They told me to tell you that they're cool because they're in danger, and that. That is fair. Like, I will say that. Just because something's in danger doesn't mean it's cool. As an example, like, you know, we have the famous example at Roger Williams with the uh, uh, American burying beetle. Hot takes, some things deserve to go extinct. Hot takes, some things deserve... And so Barbarossa deserved to go extinct. Like pandas. Why are they pandas probably do deserve to go extinct. I'm not going to lie. Probably. They do. They wouldn't be alive. They're not even endangered anymore, believe it or not. There's like a lot of animals that like used to be very endangered and they're not even endangered anymore. Polar bears, pandas, uh, alligators are a, alligators are so abundant that like they literally have like farms of them and stuff now. Um, but yes, I I don't I personally don't hate Bob Roos as much as Julie does, but. I understand where she's coming from. <laughs> she comes from a place of hating them. What? A place of hate. <laughs> a place of hate. Definitely could be worse, though. So let's do this. If we move. This is a beefy cow. Pun intended, I suppose. Really wasn't intended, but I guess pun intended, because why not? Alright. So. And then. We just want to flatten out the back side of the cow. Okay, we're looking good. Definitely looking good. Um, oh, lagged a little bit there. And 
we will do this. And that kind of rounds out the shape of the cow for the most part. He has a little bit of a big cranium. So let's just kind of reduce that a little bit. Have you ever seen a giant panda? I have. So I saw them at the National Zoo. Um, I got to feed them when I was at San Diego. Also, Bob Roosters are known as suicide pigs. <laughs> yeah, that's the reason Julie hates them, because they kill themselves. You, if you live long enough to let your tusk grow to an impressive size, nature is just like, knock, knock, time to kill yourself. <laughs> I hope that doesn't get me demonetized, just saying that, but who knows with YouTube. Alright, so this cow might be a little bit big, but we'll see. Oh, don't tell me it's going to have an issue, because something... Okay, no, that's fine. Because I need it to be... Good. Because I have to paint this thing now. So... We need to add our spots. Hello, Nicholas Lion Rider. Hello, Alejandro. I am British. What animal do you want in Planet Zoo? Um, any animals that I've wanted in Planet Zoo I've pretty much modded, so you can look at stuff like the dromedary camel, or the black rhino, obviously, white rhino, uh, gibbon, um, red river hog would be cool. I like red river hogs, I know a lot of people don't really care for them. Though I think within the zoo community people like red river hogs, weirdly. Um... Because I know, like, Red River Hogs really aren't special anywhere else, but, like, specifically within, like, the zoo fandom, I feel like it's very common to hear people being like, oh, yeah, Red River Hogs are awesome. But it's really only around here in these parts. Your zoo is 100% amazing, and we love you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Capybara would have been cool. I'm not the biggest Capybara fan. Um, but I definitely think, like, they would have been a decently deserving animal for, um, the South America pack, for sure. So I kind of wish they were in there, because I know a lot of, even though I don't care for them... Uh, it would have meant a lot to a lot of other people. But yeah, for me, the only big ones that I wish we had were California Sea Lion, Black Rhino, Gibbon. After that, I'm literally fine with nothing. Like, if, if, that, if that was the final pack ever. Because um, there's just a lot of animals that I think we could... I, I'd appreciate, like, African penguin or um, something like that. But, you know, for the most part, I'm pretty fine with the rest of the game. Um, common wildebeest would have been cool. It's just like, again, it's just, for me, it's a lot of, like, animals that I've modded. Um, maned wolf would have been a cool mod as well. Or, uh, animal to have in the game. How did I just accidentally select that one thing? Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm trying to change your color. Why well, won't it let me change the color of them? Uh, 
Uh, let me just, if I move that down. That should make them all black. There we go. Uh, you need to watch the most recent zoo tours if you like zoos. Oh, I'll, I'll check that out then. Congo Basin Pack would have been cool. Yeah, I doubt we would have gotten some like African forest elephants or something in the pack. But Red River, like, I, I, I'm surprised we had as many Congo animals in the base game as we did. Like, because we had the Okapi, the Bongo, the um, Bonobo, Chimpanzee, Western Lowland, Gorilla, Mandrill. Like, we, I mean, not in the Congo, but same idea. The Pygmy Hippo was in the, like, you know, Deluxe Edition. So we had, like, quite a bit of, you know, Congo-themed animals in our game. Um... Which is funny, because like, they're just not really that prevalent in zoos. Um, let's see. So if you're wondering why I'm also uh, making sure that this black layer is um, separated from the white it's because what i'm gonna be doing afterward is there's a brown cow that's also um in the farm or a, a brown cow sign and so it has the same spot patterning it's just um a different cow <laughs> so that's literally all i'm doing is i'm just making sure that the uh thing is going to be able to be used for multiple purposes and I can just easily just dye it and call it a day. Um, yeah, we could add the hooves quick. Um... The North American Porcupine shares its exhibit with the Snowy Owls. Yep, it does. Um, when we went uh, over the summer, it was hyperventilating. Because <laughs> apparently it was... It, yeah. Because <laughs> it just had... Um, it just laid eggs, apparently. And so, like, they'll just naturally, I guess, like... Doesn't matter what the temperature is, like, just defend the eggs. So, like, that was something that was kind of interesting. So, even though it was, like, really hot out, it wouldn't go in the shade. It would just stay on the eggs the whole time. Um, let's do this. So, make it, like, a light gray color. that so that looks pretty good for our cow um i think i made the thighs a little bit too big Also, thank you all for, like, being very patient with this stream, considering how most of the time it's just been uh, doing very tedious stuff. But I appreciate it nonetheless, because it's, it's nice to, you know, have people hanging out. All right, so... Here's what we're going to do. Actually, give me a sec. I think I need to add this to this. Good. So now we're going to have this stand upright.
think I might have made it a little too large. So we'll see how that translates. doing this just to give it some three-dimensionality and then the black oh no did I accidentally do the thing that I didn't want to do I think I did. Yep, definitely think I did. I accidentally grouped it. So, now... Split from group. Split from group. Do this. I almost don't mind the center being uh, kind of empty. Though I think I will try to negate that because I have one last thing that I wanted to do and that is this. So then if I shove this in the center of the cow, there we go. Cool. Now there's some three-dimensionality to it even though it's still kind of flat. Use the googly eyes. Honestly, that's not a terrible idea. I usually hate the googly eyes. Might use them. Yep. Honestly, that's not a bad idea. That's actually a very good idea. Again, very... Very rarely use those googly eyes, but I think in this specific circumstance, it actually works out very well. So, yeah, let's just... Because I want to... Let me just copy the black really quick, just so that I can get it so that it's brown for the second cow. And then I might call it a stream, I'm not going to lie. You know, we've been streaming for about three, almost four hours, or three and a half hours now. So, I think it might be... A good time to call it. Yeah, it's a little big. I don't even know if I mind that, though. So, it is definitely a little big. But I'll see what I can do here. I'd say it's a lot big. You'd think. I might resize it too off camera. 
just so that, you know, I'm not forcing you guys to rewatch the whole thing. our cow blank so we can add the other one so then we can move this into place patterning of the brown cow And then, I don't know why, but for some reason that isn't covered, so we can just quickly do that and do this. Just cover those little splotches right there. All right. <laughs> I remember when the barnyard was just little penguins. I mean, it had we did have the barnyard with like a few other animals and stuff. It wasn't just always just the penguins or whatever, but the penguins were right next to it. So we'll put one there and then one inside. I have to fix the splotchiness as well on this one. The black Angus cows are cool. Yeah, I do miss the black Angus cows. And there we go. All right, I am satisfied with that. Please don't delete that path just because it was selected. I have a feeling it's going to delete that whole path. Yep, it is. There we go. All right. Now let me just quickly see uh, if I can grab a tractor off the workshop. Because I would definitely say we are very close to being done with the barnyard. Epic is trying to get me to buy a bunch of, or try Crying Sons for free. Oh, Antique Tractor. That is exactly what I need. So let me just pull up whatever. Are those, uh, they're display. They're not actually a uh, exhibit. They used to be. We used to have cows, but not anymore. Um, so, let's see. No, I don't want to go to Epic Game Store. Epic, stop trying to open. <laughs> I'm trying to close you out. Alright, we will, if I can, yeah, there we go. Alright, grab this tractor and put it in. Please don't be massive, because I just kind of need a smaller tractor. Come on. How many pieces is this? This is either a lot of pieces or it's massive. Or both. Could be both. It's 
going to be huge. <laughs> It very well could be. Hey, Nick, I have a question. How do you put the white rhino mod on the juvenile? You can't. Uh, so it wasn't updated. So even though I showed off the juvenile, I haven't actually updated it yet. So if you're trying to download it off Nexus or whatever and you're wondering why it's not working, that is the reason. It's just not updated. Come on, what's the issue here? Oh boy, wait, there it is. Yes, that might be a bit big. <laughs> and it is a lot of pieces. Well, of course this is boring. It's lagging. <laughs> and it's fine, because I'm going to be ending the stream anyway. I'm kind of burnt. So, yeah. Since this is going to freak out anyway on me. I am going to call it a day, everyone. So, I apologize. It might be lagging for the last few seconds of this stream. But, thank you all for watching. I would like to shout out all of my members that I have on this stream, as I do every stream. So, I would like to thank Totter, of course, Leaf Productions, Mark, Vicky, Andy, a longtime member, and uh, now we have Drew. So now Drew is also a member of the Lion Rider family. So, thank you everyone for uh, enjoying this stream, and... Uh, I will see you guys on Thursday. So thank you for watching, and I will see you then. Bye, everyone.